Hello, New York. Welcome back to the show, Unknown. I am Luke Dorpo, and this is Roman Landry. And today's topic is creepy pastas and SCPs. Or internet horror in general, I think is a better title. That's the one. That's probably what's going on in the thumbnail. This is our October or Halloween episode, um, so we wanted to do something creepy for it. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of want to just talk about this, like, in, in the timeline of internet horror. Mm -hmm. um, and Luke has informed me that this isn't the case, but I was under the assumption that uh, creepypastas were more of like a precursor to the SCP Foundation, but from what I understand now, they sort of happened at the same time, and the SCP Foundation just sort of outlasted creepypastas. Mm -hmm. um, but we should explain what both those things are. Um, so, creepypasta is a term that originated online, and it's a combination of the words creepy and copypasta, which comes from uh, copy-paste, meaning it's like a stupid, like, internet phrase that you would, that's like a, generally like a long, like, block of text that you would just copy and paste, like, all over the place. Like the B-movie. Yeah, like how, if you see, like, people just pasting the B-movie script, like, that's a copypasta. Or Vaporeon. Or that one like that but it turned into like these like internet urban legends uh, or or internet cryptids the most famous being slenderman who was created in like a 2009 uh hp lovecraft inspired photoshop contest weirdest way for that creature to sort of happen and you're gonna say something just about like sonic.exe and mario.exe and i think there's one about pokemon i can't remember uh, but just remember, it's official from like the. It, kind of, it came from the Sonic creators themselves that everything is canon, so that makes Sonic.exe canon. What, what like is Sonic.exe though? Because like, um, is it similar to like the corrupted like uh, Legend of Zelda game? Like that's another. That's one. exactly. It, it's like a, a small branch of creepy pasta where like people have quote-unquote corrupted games. Well, what does it do? Like, does the game tell you to, like, unalive yourself or something? I believe you play as, like, Tails, and as you continue throughout the game, uh, all of your friends in the game die around you. Then at the very end, it's like a, a real up-close picture of Sonic with his eyes gone. It's like blood coming down. It's like he's coming after you now, after you killed everybody in the game. I think that's it. Oh, I don't have this on the list, but I, it reminds me of um, Smile Dog, which is still an image you'll see like floating around, where it's just like a dog with like human eyes and a human smile. It's a picture. Sorry, I know it's spooky, but um, oh, that is interesting. Yeah, <laughs> um, but there's that one, and there's also um, Jeff the Killer, which is I feel like it turned into sort of its own thing, where it it was just a very like like basic like oh this, this guy murdered people and it was like a like modern day jack the ripper sort of thing and then people like start sipping at you yeah that, that's what i was going to talk about you like everybody's seen that weird section of the internet where these people like think serial killers are hot i think it, it's actually particularly visible online right now because the new Dahmer series just came out question was jeff the killer on the uh tumblr sexy man poll <laughs> I, maybe if the poll was in like 2014. Um, well, I mean, the one was on there. Or 2011, which is when he was. Yeah, but the one is timeless. Like, late 2000s sort of internet horror is where creepypasta sort of found a home for themselves. And um, I think maybe even before that, like in the early 2000s, I think we talked about this in our last episode actually, but stuff like, like the maze game that you would send to people to jump scare them or salad oh. fingers. I feel like that's even before creepypastas. When was Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared? Or Llamas oh. with Hats? Yeah. And Charlie the Unicorn. Yeah, I, that was all early 2000s. I don't know, I think Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is a bit newer. That's still going on. That's sort of like what I wanted to kind of like frame this episode in, is that there's like different waves of internet horror. So I feel like before even the creepypasta stuff, there was yeah, like old, early 2000s internet videos, mostly like Salad Finger series, which is also still ongoing, by the way, and Llamas of Hats. Um, 
Do you know when the first episode was? Eleven years ago. Okay. So, twenty eleven. Yeah. Okay, so that's the same time for yeah. Don't Talk Me I'm Scared, but I think Salad Fingers is a bit before that. Uh. I can look that up. I, you, you vamp while I look that one up. I, 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 I what? Vamp while I look this up. What the fuck does vamp mean? Y'all know what vamp means? Everybody knows what vamp means. It means like I don't know what waste means. waste time talking so it's not dead air and I don't have to cut it out. This is being you cut mean out. Rant? No, don't cut this out. I'm vamping right now. This is me vamping. It's not vamping if I have to participate while I'm trying to look up something. Okay, 2004 was the first episode of Salad Fingers, so definitely uh, that was like the first wave. I was two years old whenever the first episode came out. That's before Katrina. Yeah, that's wild. Holy shit. That's really early internet. Is it like a pioneer of that section of the internet? I'd say Creepy so. Creepy pasta. That, that's like the first, like, how, how much further are you going to go back? Besides, like, urban legends just, like, typed on, like, some internet forum. I, like, honestly, I, I can't think of anything past that. Uh, I know there's a Slender Man game. There's yeah, that. I, that's what we need to focus on. How big of a deal Slenderman became. Games, um, I think multiple movies. It was like two movies. Maybe there's just one. I I, rem I know there was one in that it was shit. It was okay. And then I remember a bunch of like spin-off games where it has the same mechanics. You have to find eight of a specific item and make it out. Yeah, and I know one of those was a, a Shrek based one. That's the one I played. Okay. I, is it Slenderman in the Eight Pages? Is that the name of the game? Yeah, I think so. That's yeah. a classic. The movie, the mo Slenderman movie was, it's kind of like, you know, like modern teenage drama. So I don't, it's kind of, it's kind of annoying, but um, it's the, like, Slenderman's design was actually really cool. Like it was, they didn't give a good chance for you to see it in the movie but if you look at like behind the scenes stuff he, it, he's like like when he's in shadow in the movie it looks like he's wearing like his classic suit but if you look at like the behind the scenes stuff it's like organic it's, it's like it's like but not even that it's like made out of like like tree bark and like veins and weird stuff like i don't know and then like he made like cicada noises um and, and like he would he transformed into like a tree at the end so they made him into like this weird like forest spirit and I, I, that was really interesting so i appreciate I like, like me my forest because like in those photos that you see of him on the internet he's always in the forest a little girl or something mm -hmm. so i really i really like that take you know who he reminds me of he reminds me of siren head we will get back to that so happening at the same time uh or i should say beginning at the same time as like this wave of creepypastas uh, was the SCP Foundation. I think it's since risen to popularity, and I think it probably reached the height maybe a couple of years ago. Well, I'd say so, yeah. I don't think it's as popular as it used to be, but it's still oh. a pretty big thing. So it's kind of niche, I think more niche than creepypastas. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my best to explain what the SCP Foundation is, um, and then link to some uh, other channels that go a lot more into detail and do the topic a lot more justice. So, to start, um, SCP stands for Secure, Contain, Protect, or Security Containment Protocol, and I'll go into more of what that means later. But essentially, the SCP Foundation is sort of a wiki uh, where a bunch of um, like freelance writers, uh, creative horror and sci-fi writers come together and write essentially horror stories in the form of like these files uh, discussing like uh, some, some anomalous thing. Uh, but the site was launched in 2008 um, and this is a quote that I got from the Volgun, which is a channel that I get a lot of my SCP content from. He does great stuff uh, and I'll link him in the description. Uh, he says, the SCP Foundation is a collaborative creative writing platform centered around the fictional foundation, a scientific and military organization that seeks to protect humanity and the status quo by locating and containing all anomalies. Anomalies, objects, life forms, events, locations, concepts, creations, and phenomena that in one way or another violate natural law. Um, so this all originated from a 4chan post in 2007 containing the first SCP. This is SCP-173, 
and it was a baby-like concrete statue that moved when you looked away from it. So if you're familiar with the Weeping Angels from Doctor Who, it operates the same way, where if you look, even so much as blink, it will move the speed of light towards you and snap your neck. So fun. Um, and then there's also like talk of it being covered in like blood and rebar and spray paint. Mm -hmm. Disgusting. Um, uh, and so an interesting more topical thing that just recently happened, this this SCP sort of became like the face of the SCP Foundation because of it being the first one. Um, I don't, why is it 173 if it's the first one? I guess they just reorganized it later. But um, that uh, sculpture was made by artist Izumi Kato, and he recently, he or she, I actually don't know, uh, recently found out what th it was being used for and was like, you can't do this. And, and uh, I think respectfully asked, can you please um, make a new look for this SCP? Uh, and so there was an online challenge uh, where artists kind of each gave their own take of what this sort of concrete rebar baby would look like, and it became the new look for the monster. And I'll put some different versions of it right here. Um, it's, it was, I, I always love art challenges like that, where it's like, give your own take on this really popular internet thing. If I was the artist of that sculpture, I would think that was cool as shit that, you know, uh, my art gave something that's a part of this whole popular thing. Fuck, that's not my most eloquently put thing. At least they res were respectful about it. Like, yeah, they no. didn't come off as like a real dick, like, hey, you can't fucking do that, I'll suit you. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I, I, I don't know the full story, but I don't think it was that, I think they were just like, look, I, this is my product, you know, this is my creation, so I'd like to do what I want with it. And, you know, y'all can use it as inspiration, I think, it was kind of right. went down. Um, uh, so, to continue, the Volgon uh, also states that operating clandestine and worldwide, the Foundation operates beyond jurisdiction. Um, so, to get some context before I continue that quote, there's the fictional SCP uh, wiki, which is the um, collection of all these articles and stories written by these writers. Uh, but it's set up and treated as if it is fully real and you're entering this sort of clandestine, secretive organization that protects our world from weird, fantastical, magical, anomalous threats and tries to contain them. So it's presented as entirely real. It's super difficult to get into and write. It, it's, it's crazy. It, the process, it's almost like it actually is real. Um, so continue, operating what can clandestine and worldwide, the Foundation operates beyond jurisdiction, empowered and entrusted by every major national government uh, with the task of containing anomalous ob objects, entities, and phenomena. The anomalies pose a significant threat to global security by threatening either physical or psychological harm. So that's something I should also stress about SCPs is that it's, it's more than just like your horror movie slasher villain. It's not, they're not like your average uh, burglar or criminal. It's weird cosmic threats that are you can't even uh, describe. It's very Lovecraftian like that. Um, and then, so here are some important terms uh, that they use a lot on the site. Like I said already, anomaly slash anomalous. It's just anything that does not follow the rules of reality as we know them. Um, there are different object classes, um, which basically identifies how easy it is to contain these threats. Um, each anomaly contained within the Foundation has uh, an assigned object class, and this is from the site, by the way, uh, which tell how difficult something is to contain. The three most common classes are safe, meaning containment is simple, uh, Euclid, uh, meaning containment is more complex, and Keter, uh, meaning the containment is very difficult to maintain. And that is a gross oversimplification of all the different versions. Uh, but again, you can get a lot more uh, information on this from the channels that I link in the description. Uh, there is also mobile task forces or MTF units, uh, which are elite units for responding and containing anomalies. Uh, depending on the anomaly, these range from paramilitary teams uh, to group specialized researchers. 
Uh, there are also groups of interest sort of within the world of the SCP Foundation. Uh, there are cults, like the circuit cults, which worship, like, disgusting body horror stuff. There's the Global Occult Co Coalition, which has, like, a similar mission to the SCP Foundation, but does it in more, like, unscrupulous and less moral ways. Again, a lot of this stuff is oversimplified, but I've just got to get through this in the simplest way possible. Church of the Broken God. Church of the Broken God. It, these are huge, overarching fantasy stories, like... SCPs can be from a drink, uh, like a soda fountain that can produce any liquid to like Lord of the Rings levels fantasy stories. Mm -hmm. Like it's so vast, there's there's something there for everybody. I do have a couple I want to bring up later. Containment, uh, like, uh, or like object class, I should say, isn't based on how dangerous the thing is, but how easy it is to contain. So something could be like universe obliterating, but if you can just lock it in a room, and it's not gonna hurt anybody, then it's a safe. It's as safe long place. as this egg, egg doesn't get broken, the universe will stay safe. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it, it's a weird, crazy stuff like that, really creative. Um, there are actually really strict guidelines as to how to write SCP files, mm -hmm. like if you wanna create your own. So just more of the reason which makes it feel so real. Um, and then, uh, Generally, the consensus is that the SCP Foundation is overseen by uh, the O5 Council, or uh, uh, Council of Overseers, uh, which contains 13 members, and they're generally kept pretty secretive. I think some are known by name, but some of them... Uh, but that's the thing about the SCP Foundation, because it's so crazy and fantastical, there are often multiple different, like, universes and canons, so not all stories fit perfectly together. Um, so some stories may not have this O5 Council as an overseer, they may just have like this one person called like the administrator. Um, and then there is D-class personnel, which are generally death row inmates that they use to handle uh, difficult threats. But not all of them are. Yeah, not all of them. Uh, but that's sort of generally how the foundation works. I know that was a lot of information I just threw at you, um, but if you want it more easily explained, I'll link some videos in the description by the Vulcan. And the Exploring series is also a really good SCP uh, article catalog. As we said, uh, he mostly said, since he was going on this big explanation It's a lot, it's a lot. It is a lot. I did not feel like explaining any of that, so you're a better person that than me. Yeah, I did this in like 15 minutes before we started filming, but yeah. Yeah, anyways, so SCPs, they're wide, varied. Some of them are benevolent, some of them are malevolent, some of them are just objects. Uh, there are various SPs such as, that I want to cover, such as uh, a Dr. Bright. He's this uh, more comedic part of the... Uh, SCP Foundation. Uh, he's this immortal man chained to this like neck uh, amulet. Anyone who puts that amulet on, their like personality is erased and he's replaced with it. And he's just this sort of crazy kooky guy who has this big sheet of things he can no longer do in the SCP Foundation. And then uh, another SCP I don't know the numbers for these. I mean, I don't know the names. Yeah, the either. the numbers are generally just like as they are added to the foundation. Mm -hmm. um, I know number one is a pretty contested title, and there's actually multiple multiple possible. multiple possible ones, but only one is true, and that one is only known by the O5 Council. Mm -hmm. It's so each one is so dangerous and like universe shattering that it is kept secret and generally confusing. Well, a lot of them of the um, SCP-1 classification are uh, things that are producing all of the various SCPs and anomalies in the world. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the SCP Foundation, while they have humanity's best interests at heart, they are not good people. Uh, like, 
they utilize everything they have to its fullest extent, no matter like how terrible it might be. Such as uh, the D-class personnel, he said that some of the, uh, most of them are uh, death row inmates, but not all of them. There's this uh, SCP where every single morning this kid gets off this bus and then dies some horrific way. And then the next morning, another bus will arrive and produce another one. And so the SCP Foundation uses this, like, I don't know, 14 year old kid as a infinite reoccurring uh, D-class personnel that they use for like these terrible experiments. Yeah, and there's also another one where there's like this horrible, I think it's like the, called like the Scarlet King, which is like mm. an entity that shows up in a lot of SCP articles, where it, they, I may be combining multiple ones, but the, a ritual needs to be performed to keep him at bay, and that ritual is like so vile, they don't even want to like talk about it, but it's about like, um, like, killing newborns and it's it's so awful and they don't even go into full description of it but um at the end of the article it's revealed that it's not they're they don't actually do the ritual it's it's, a, it's, a, it's fake but they need everybody to believe that it's happening mm -hmm. because belief is what's powerful in the situation and belief is what keeps this like scarlet king entity at bay I don't know if that's the Scarlet King I, or I, like. It may actually they, not be the Scarlet King. There yeah. was one about this deer god that sounds similar to that. Yeah, there are locations and gods and creatures it's that show that show insane. up in in, in um, multiple different stories. Now, uh, another thing I want to talk about, which it's not an SCP itself, but it's a uh, train of thought in the SCP universe. Uh, they call it like paraphysics, P-A-R-A physics. Uh, I think that's what it's called. So many people just stopped watching. Don't quote me on that. It's not actual physics. It's, it, it's... Magic exists in this world. So, yeah. That's not what paraphysics is. But I know, but like... Okay, so, uh, paraphysics, what it is, is that the, uh, essentially that the SCP Foundation is aware of us. Like, they know that they're nothing but a written story and they're trying to break out of it, which is essentially what paraphysics is, if I am remembering correctly. I haven't seen it in years. Yeah, there's a lot of meta stuff like that. Um, but I don't want to go and explain to you SCP articles and tell you all the details because I, I couldn't do it justice. But um, like I said a million times already, it'll be in the description. Uh, oh. But some of my personal favorites are the Red Pool, which is a blood red pool that randomly appeared in uh, Canada one day. And uh, they had a journey into it and discovered like this other dimension. There's one that's simply called the architect, which is some device that if you put it in any indoor structure, it warps it endlessly. It makes objects out of random objects that wouldn't make sense, like glass mm -hmm. books and, and floors made out of like lava rock. Um, there's uh, the Red Sea object, uh, which is uh, a circular red disc found at like the bottom of the Red Sea, which transport you to different dimensions. Those are my favorites, so I can link those in the description too by those the same channels that I mentioned earlier. But I also have two on my list that you said you were interested in, so I'll let you take uh, care of those. Okay, so I want to bring up uh, some of the most popular SCPs. Uh, there's one that it's an infinite IKEA. Uh, you're you're trapped in there and you can't find your way out. And the Ikea just keeps on going on and on with these. Which, which is based off the idea that Ikeas are like that. In Amaze. Life. Yeah. And there's these uh, employees that are these faceless monsters that roam the halls. And whenever the lights go out, they tell you to leave the store as they try to hunt you down and kill you. And there's these uh, tribes of people in there who like build a little society. 
eating the Swedish meatballs from mm -hmm. the food court? Uh, a few other uh, ones are uh, the shy guy. He, uh, if you see even like a singular pixel of his face in the picture, he'll like hunt you down and kill you. You're not safe at the bottom of the sea. You're not safe on the moon. I was, I was just gonna say that you may like think, how do you contain an infinite Ikea? And a lot of the times when it's a situation like that, an SCP Foundation site will be built around the area or there will just be constant surveillance uh, of that area. So it, it's not just like locking a creature up in like an indestructible box. It's weird things that they have to deal with. True. And then uh, there's the uh, the statue that he was talking about earlier. The, the one first one, yeah. Where you blink and it moves. 173. The, the last real popular one I want to talk about is the uh, unkillable lizard, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. It's this, they say it's a lizard, but it's like a giant fucking reptile where it's constantly regenerating and more than regenerating, it's adapting. So there's this thing called a cross experimentation where they'll uh, take two SCPs and make them interact with each other. And so there's this uh, huge list of uh, cross testing with this uh, unkillable lizard that is constantly adapting with all these other types of SCPs. And it gets pretty insane. Yeah, and um, I think one of the original images used for that SCP ironically was a decomposing whale on a beach and they just didn't quite know what it was at the time and it looked like it had like reptilian flesh on it but it was just like rotting whale which is really nasty there's two more i want to mention that aren't uh real popular well i don't know if they're real popular there's this one called Cragglewood park i'm not going to explain it because i don't remember it too well but it terrified me whenever I first listened to it, which I really recommend you go uh, and do. And the other one was just more of an example on how insane some of these SCPs are. It's this, uh, I think, North Korean woman who she can do anything but only like half of it. If somebody uh, told her to jump 10 feet in the air, she would jump, but only five feet. And she could break reality to do these uh, tasks, but she can only go halfway with it, which is still incredibly overpowered. Yeah, I never even heard of that one. Um, and then there's also one that comes to mind, uh, the Plague Doctor one, Ooh, but I, that's know, a I, I know nothing about. I think he like tries to heal people of something called like the pestilence, but it's they just die whenever he touches them. I think that's yeah. the thing. So those are just a few of like the ones that I was a fan of, the ones that are more popular. Uh, but I, I can't neglect in saying that there's some that are literally like Tolkien level, like fantasy stories, mm -hmm. like and, and like entire alternate histories to humankind, like how. How like there were there were humans have existed for a million years before we thought they did, and there was like huge cities with technology like uh, like Autopapadopoulos. Is what one was one of them? Three Philadelphias. Three Portlands. Three it, Portlands. It's like there are three in real life. There are three Portlands on the planet Earth, and there's they they connect. Uh, they each have like a portal to like an a alternate portal, Portland. Portland, uh, oh, Portlands uh, to like a giant a giant. Portland somewhere it's like some magical place and then there's yeah like I said there's like Otto Papadopoulos I love that name and it's like an ancient city mm -hmm. uh, that does, it is like had had like biblical characters uh, there. the Ouroboros cycle oh, Christ that is a headache if you if you can, if you can follow there's, that there's no one's happening I'm sorry I'm sorry um, but uh, yeah no uh, <laughs> I have to link that series specifically in the description because holy crap it's confused. 
the SCP Foundation has a, a bunch of fan content, such as fan games, uh, comics, stories. Well, I don't mean to interrupt, but you say fan content. In this case, though, like... It's all fan content. There, sure, there's moderators for the site, I'm sure, but there's no, like, committee. Like, it's just, everybody's just doing their own thing, which is cool. That, I think that's what makes the SCP Foundation so unique. So there's this one series, it's a comic series called uh, SCP Oversimplified. It has cute little art and it's like explaining the bare minimum of certain SCPs. More to catch your interest and get you to look at more of it. Then uh, there are some videos online, whether it's live action or animated for SCPs. One real popular one I know is made by Lord Bung. I don't remember the name of it because it's been a while since there was an episode. And then, and then fan games. There's a SCP containment breach, you said? Um, security breach or containment breach or something like that. It sounds too similar to uh, Five Nights at Freddy's new game. Yeah, but it's we... you're, you're essentially like, I think, a D-class personnel who uh, is stuck in like a containment breach of a bunch of SCPs, and so you have to get out of there. Yeah, and I, I believe they're making a, uh, a, I don't know if it's by the same people, but they're making a new SCP game that looks like it's going to be really good, but the last one I want to bring up is actually a, a game that is inspired by SCP Foundation, but doesn't actually have SCPs in it. It has their own little class of anomalies and such, and it's called a Lobotomy Corporation. It's basically like you're a, a director of one of these facilities, and you're a maintaining the uh, cells and the building of containing all these anomalies. It, it's a monster maintenance game where you have to like keep them fed, keep them happy, keep electricity and water running through the facility. And if something goes wrong, you need to like task your little people to take care of it, stuff like that. Yeah, but just, I, again, I just want to make sure that, like, it gets across that SCPs are not just, like, creepy monsters or cryptids. They're not. They're, it, 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 like, an SCP isn't, like, a thing per se. It's more so the file and, which is a number assigned, so SCP... Blank, whatever, blank, whatever, blank. 2002, whatever. Um, and it's, it could be, like, a phenomenon that happens in, like, a town. It could be a singular person. It could be a different dimension. It could be three Portlands. It could be so many different things. Uh, that reminds me, there's this uh, small little subsection of SCP Foundation uh, where they're anomalous objects, but they weren't considered important enough to get like a, a SCP classification. Like one of it, one of them is just an unbreakable lamp, and that's all it is. So it's not deemed important enough. Yeah, no, I, like for just as many like fantastical stories they have out there, there's just as many like really stupid ones that are just there for fun. And then, ooh, like you talked about other, uh, what's it, what's it called? Other people in the in the series, like. The uh, Church of the Broken God, oh. what are they called? Uh, I have my the brain went, um, my my brain went blank. Groups Martin. of interest. Groups of interest. Uh, one of them I like is Are We Cool Yet? Which is a bunch of artists yeah. who uh, make anomalous art. Yeah. But they're like snobby art students, you know. I'm not snobby. But yeah, so. Is there anything else you want to say about the SCP Foundation? Because uh, look at Lord Bung's art, uh, little oh, series. Oh yeah, is, is, is there YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Other internet content you want to recommend? Uh, um, listen to an explanation of Craggle Wood Park. That that fucked me up. Yeah. So and the tower. The tower also fucked me. Up. 
the the Volgun and the Exploring series of the channels that I recommend. I'll have those linked and then maybe some specific videos by them. Um, so now that we're moving past the SCV Foundation, and I think it did, we're kind of past its peak of popularity in my opinion. It's still pretty popular, but I think we're entering a new wave, and that wave was marked by Siren Head. Because I really... I don't want to be demeaning and say that I feel like Siren Head is the new Slenderman. Mm, but I it, know, I agree. It fulfilled that same niche. Um, and I love Siren Head. I, um, the creator, Trevor Henderson, I want to make sure you know that Trevor Henderson created him. Because it's just an unfortunate situation where he was just like any other Twitter artist. And then he made a novel idea out of Siren Head. It blew up and everybody ran with it and nobody credited him there's i'm sure you've seen hired siren head everywhere like you know standing in someone's lawn somebody is a halloween costume uh somebody's trying to sell the game somebody's trying to sell toys um and trevor henderson is correct credited for none of this despite creating a piece of internet culture and it's it sucks but I looked into this of my own characters because my parents were always like so worried. They're like, Roman, copyright your stuff so you can, and like, okay, so I looked into this. It's hundreds of dollars. You need a lawyer. Like, it, it's just, and there's just no way. There's so much stuff out there now. Trevor is just, it sucks. Screwed. But enough of that. I want to talk about how great of a character Siren Head is. And not only that, but Trevor Henderson has created so many other monsters, long horse, uh, like he makes little figures out of them. And there are games, there are games that uh, was was made with his permission and he gets cut from it. So there, there's stuff out there that supports him. I would look for that uh, when you are, are interested in this sort of stuff. But um, I, I really want to credit Trevor Henderson uh, as, as sort of a big person who made this new shift in internet horror. Uh, I can see what's next on the list, and I was uh, thinking about a few things I could think of. Yeah, I, I had, uh, like, YouTube videos that are, like, unnerving images with unnerving music, a lot of which feature Trevor Henderson's work. Um, so, yeah, what were you going to say? Uh, I was just uh, remembering there's that one music video where uh, it's, like, the symbolized dementia. It's, like, 40 minutes long. Yeah, oh gosh. I don't know, I forgot about that. It's called, um, oh Christ, what is it called? It's by The Caretaker, is the musical artist. While he thinks of that, I'm gonna explain uh, other things I was thinking about that fits it. Uh, one is, a uh, it's this video, of this, it was an ice cream commercial, I think, and he was, he typing, I'm I got it. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I thought I had okay, a Okay, we're, we're, we're stopping now. Uh, it's, um, Everywhere at the end of time, which yeah, it's it's a uh, six and a half hour musical work that is supposed to symbolize the deterioration of the brain uh, suffering from dementia, and I know that sounds weird and something nobody would ever want to listen to, but to give you an idea, it sounds like nineteen thirties ballroom music playing in another echoey room. Mm -hmm. It's hauntingly beautiful. I highly recommend just having six and a half hours where you don't have anything to do if you ever had that time and just listen to it in one go it's incredibly emotionally moving i've done it multiple times and it's just a great work of music okay so uh anyway the ice just, cream yeah uh, i i think it was an ice cream commercial where the guy is just like made out of ice cream and he's just taking a scoop full of his head and then <gasps> eating it I, I know what you're talking about that terrified me then there was this other video where uh, it's like this oh, a creepy God. doll of a woman eating soup in hell. I know that one. That must have been but the same person. It looks pretty similar. Uh, and then these aren't really scary, but they're more like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, I know it's like Omega Wolf, I think it's called. They put some good stuff out. Uh, there's this uh, insurance commercial called Klarna. And there's like this fish sliding down a uh, slide. And it's like starts spinning around on the floor while this music plays behind it. <laughs> what are you 
talking about? <laughs> the last one I won, uh, and then there's like 10 hours of silence with uh, the first four beats of Megalovania popping in every now and then. So you'll just be sitting in silence and, and just okay. out of nowhere it'll be... Doo -doo -doo -doo. I know, I know you hate me talking about Germa. I recently started watching Germa. I find him I, very funny. I love him. Um, but I, I found a video in that same vein where it's it's like 10 hours of silence uh, interspersed with Germa insulting you. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's internet horror if I've ever heard it. Um, but while you look that up, uh, also, this these like unnerving YouTube videos lead into the concept of liminal spaces, which I brought up a couple times, and I'm not going to do a full story of it right now because I want to do a whole episode on it, but it's weird, nostalgic, transitional spaces that you've seen in your, that you've seen in your life, like a daycare you used to go to, or a hallway, or like a, a, a hotel lobby, or like a, a park with nobody in it. They generally feature no people. And it's just really, it's, it's got the same sort of nostalgic quality as uh, Everywhere at the End of Time, like I was talking about. And the, the music from that uh, piece really complements uh, Liminal Space Photography. That sounds really weird, but we, we're going to do an episode of Liminal Spaces in the future, I promise. I really want to. Okay. Uh, well, I was trying to think of just a few moments ago, but couldn't. Is this a... Uh... These people called cryo chamber. I love them. Yeah, whenever I uh, I listen. I love to, their music so much. I listen to that specific one, "Songs for an Empty World." Uh, whenever I'm like trying to get to sleep, I just yeah. play in the background. They have a like a I think it's called World Clock. I think or Word Clock or something like that. It's a playlist that they have. Um, and it's it's great. It's it's more unique than the normal stuff, mm -hmm. but it's like it's like ambient uh relaxing music it's different from everywhere at the end of time and it's it's like ambient music but like if you were the only person left alive on earth <laughs> yeah yeah uh, there's also a channel called iron cthulhu apocalypse which is similar music Wait. <laughs> yeah, what was that it's a wild name but it's got similar music you're gonna have to send me that yeah. once i can check um, them out but this is all to say that those two channels and everywhere at the end of time, uh, you see uh, as music playing over videos with like um, unnerving places, liminal spaces, creatures, like often drawn by Trevor Henderson. So a very, very popular liminal space that has come to light very recently, I'd say within the past two years or so, is the back rooms. And if you remember back in our first episode, that's kind of where we were sitting, and that was kind of going to be where we were going to sit in every episode, but uh, we're working out the show, so we're going we're gonna to figure that out in the future, but um, that's sort of the aesthetic we went for for this show, but it's, if you don't know what the backgrounds is, it's another internet horror story, not an SCP, but a popular internet horror story, where it's endless rooms of these yellowy wallpaper covered walls and like ugly water stained carpet and lore has sort of developed from the original idea of just this endless back room that you find yourself in randomly where there's monsters and there's different levels and you can kind of take it as far as you want some people just go with the idea that it's just an endless maze of these rooms, uh, but some people take it where it's, it's almost like a game that you have to get out of and escape monsters and stuff. So I, I prefer just the more simpler idea of it, but um, it's it's a pretty vast and branching concept of it now. Uh, so much so that like MatPat from Game Theory has made a, a few videos on it. Um, but it's it was also like the proto kind of form of like analog horror. So there's, that's like the new sort of genre of internet horror. So I think, and I don't know if you agree with me or not, but analog horror is the newest, most exciting form of internet horror. Mm -hmm. The Backrooms is kind of, it's become that. It's become uh, an analog uh, horror sort of story. Well, one guy is doing it. And yeah. he did it very well and it got very popular. What's the guy's name? Let me, I need to credit him. Um, let's see. Who created the backrooms? Well, originally it was like a, 
a 4chan post or something. Oh, that's another thing. Yeah, similar to the SV Foundation, it originated on a random 4chan post. I should have did an essay on this. Where it was just a photo of like what you've come to know as the background now. Backgrounds where it's like ugly fluorescent lighting. like Yellow, yellow wallpaper, yeah. damp carpets. Yeah, it, it was just like a random photo of like the back of like an office building. And nobody can trace it. Like even with like Google reverse image search, nobody can find where this image came from. And so it just spurred like the creation of this, this mm -hmm. whole thing. Um, yeah. So found on 4chan in May of 2019. So yeah, very recent in, in terms of, you know, the grand scheme of things here. Which is strange because I remember it being a lot older than that. Yeah, and it, um, same with Siren Head. Posted by an anonymous user too. So we don't even have that to work off of. Who's the, who, what name do we put behind the backgrounds? Uh, look up backrooms on YouTube. Backrooms video. There's like one very popular video that, that so, like, the backrooms were that image to begin with, uploaded by an anonymous user, but then there was a popular video that really spurred it. Kane Parsons. Kane Pixels. That's his name. Not that, that Kane of mine. So, I can also link that in the description, but he made, like, a video of somebody, like, falling into the backrooms, and that's kind of what spurred its popularity. Um, but, yeah, so that's, so it's, I think it's a little bit severed from analog horror. It's more of, like the idea, whereas analog horror series are like uh, video series on YouTube or elsewhere that, that the, the concept is the, the video aspect of it. They get pretty expansive and confusing and like uh, these people put a lot of work into them. Yeah, um, but what makes it terrifying is like the bad quality. It's like filmed on v VHS, or it's not filmed on it, but it's got the filter, you know. Uh, um, and so there, there are a few really famous ones, just like SCPs, we're not going to go ahead and explain all these because it's a lot of expansive storylines, uh, but some of the most famous ones right now are the Mandela Catalog, uh, the Monument Mythos, and what was the one you said? Uh, Gemini Home Entertainment? Gemini Home Entertainment. Uh, and all of those, uh, I think, yeah, the backrooms too now have been covered by Wendigoon, another popular YouTuber that kind of inspired this show, honestly. Oh, uh, which one had the trees that weren't trees? The Nature's Mockery? Uh, no, the, that, like, like the, the trees that went into other dimensions and... Oh, that's the monument with us. Is that the same one with, like, the statue just peeking over? God, yeah, that literally just gave me chills. Oh yeah, my that, god. That was terrifying. The the Okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil it. I, yeah, I was about I, to like say it, but I just I didn't holy wanna, crap. I didn't want to spoil it. Holy either. crap. That it's was. terrifying. It really like if you I, I'm gonna link the description or link in the description the, the video that one degree did on it, so you can watch that for yourself. <laughs> um Damn. Yeah. Okay. That's about all I wanted to say about internet horror. That was in fact not everything I wanted to say about internet horror. Um, I don't know how I forgot this, honestly, because it's really on my shirt the entire episode, but another really great um, internet horror story. It's not really analog horror, but I didn't quite know where else to fit this in. Uh, but it's another internet horror story called Mystery Flush Pit National Park. Uh, there's a site you can go to where it's treated like a real thing. And essentially, it's this giant living organism underground that people in the 80s start to build like a shopping mall and theme park inside of until the creature wakes up on the 4th of July because some firework debris gets in its mouth and kills everybody inside as it tries to uproot itself from the earth. Uh, and so that's why that shirt is covered in blood because it's like you were there on that day. It's great. It's one of my favorites. I highly suggest you go look it up. Wendigoon also covered it, so I'll link it in the description. Uh, and then also some other content uh, that is from the original creator. Yeah. What do you want to add? Uh, shit. Fuck. Um, llamas and hats. Uh, llamas with hats. The, the, the Charlie the year, year, Unicorn. That's about it. Okay. Yeah, no. Yeah, uh, but just to wrap things up. Don't hug me, I'm scared. Um, I feel like internet horror throughout its entire history has been something that's 
been neglected by the mainstream media. I think there's a lot of really cool content here that could make some good money in the theaters. I really, I, I, I think it's kind of just being wasted sitting on the internet. I, I feel like. I feel like the monument mythos could be like a, a four hour long movie. And I still wouldn't understand any of it. The monument mythos could be a cinematic universe, really. And I still wouldn't understand it. It's just like a lot of these so concepts. Much. Yeah. A lot of these concepts though, like, I'm not trying to say, oh, well, it's too smart for, we're, we're smart, or it's too smart for modern audiences. I'm not trying to say that. That is, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. I'm just saying a lot, like, as you can see from me trying to explain the SCP Foundation, it's a lot. So I think that's most of the reason why it hasn't become very mainstream. And we were talking before the show about how like modern horror movies just are purely jump scares and everybody's just okay with that for some reason. Uh, it's, it's terrible. True scary is like you feel it, it's this slowly growing sense of dread. Yeah, it's the difference between startling someone and terrifying clings someone. clings to your back. Yeah. Like, just thinking about that angel in the Monument Mythos gave I, me the chills. I do mean cling to your back. Like, there's this almost, uh, it feels like there's this physical weight clinging on to you. Yeah. It's all cold and clammy. It's not, it's... Clams. But, and that's why I like, uh, Jordan Peele's movie so much because I feel like he's the one horror director at the moment um, you know he did Nope he did Us he did Get Out and um, I've yet to see Get Out but regardless those two movies they don't focus too much on jump scares it's the concept that's terrifying I believe two really good ones uh, old scary movies were uh, The Thing the old version not the new version the new version sucks well, the only other one I remember is uh, The Shining. Yeah. When I was first watching it, I didn't really feel that scared, but like after watching it, when it sank in a bit, it, it started to cling to me a bit. Yeah, and like a lot of this internet horror stuff takes inspiration from uh, Lovecraft's work. H.P. Lovecraft is most famous for creating Cthulhu, if you know that creature. Um, but you don't see a lot of that in in modern movies in Hollywood. Um, I don't know why. I'm not sure if it's part of the Cthulhu mythos, but uh, what was it? The King in Yellow. I like that one. Yeah, yeah, that's that's part of it. Um, and it's um, it's weird because like there was a movie that came out recently. I forget the name. I think it was like just called Underwater or something like that with the girl from Twilight. I forget her name. I'm sorry. The, I'll put it here. There's that. Pink movie, Color from Outer Space. Oh, yeah. But again, that didn't even get a full theatrical release. The Color Out of Space with Nicolas Cage is one of my favorites, but it's just, I don't know. That type of horror, I guess, just studios and have decided is not suitable for general audiences. There was a Cthulhu dating game, a okay. dating simulator. Okay. Um, yeah, that's just hard to say. Um, that's all to say that I, I just, I wish there'd be more, uh, type of horror that we see online in mainstream media. I mm -hmm. think it would do really well. I'm tired of nothing but jump scares. Bye! Happy Halloween! Goodbye, New York! <laughs> What's with the New York thing? I thought it would be funny.